Vue.js is a front-end framework and it's component-based, similar to Angular and React. But it's very popular amongst developers because it's very simple to use. Let's see how to install and get started with Vue. The first step is to install Node.js and NPM, Node Package Manager, to your computer. You can check to see if they are already installed by going to the terminal window and run node space hyphen v and npm space hyphen v. If they are not installed, head over to node.js website and choose the LTS version to start downloading it. Then install it to your computer as usual. Now we have node.js and npm installed. And in my case, I already installed them both and the node version is version 12.13.1 and the npm version is 6.13.4 at the time of this recording. You may have a higher version by the time you are watching this video. There are multiple ways to install a Vue.js project in my computer. Let's see how to do it using Vue CLI. Vue CLI is a npm package that allows us to create a Vue project quickly by asking a series of questions to configure our project the way we want it, such as do I need a router included, how I want to build the Vue app, and so on. Let's install it globally so that I can create a Vue project anywhere in my computer. Open up the terminal window and run npm space install space view hyphen CLI. And to install it globally, add hyphen G at the end and hit enter. This will take a few seconds to complete the installation process. Once it's done, the next step is to create a brand new view project. I'm going to create it inside my desktop. So on my terminal window, I'm going to say cd space tilde slash desktop. Then run this command view space init space webpack project name my first project the name must be url friendly so no space at this stage you may be asked to install cli init package if so go ahead and install it by running the following command npm space install space hyphen g space at view slash cli hyphen init once it's done, you can run the view init webpack command again. This will ask a series of questions. The first one is project name. The project description I'm going to leave as it is and author as well. View build. I'm going to choose the runtime plus compiler recommended for most users option. Then I'll be using view router in this course, so I'm going to say yes to it. I'm going to say no to ESLint, unit test, or Nightwatch. Then it will ask how I want to install the dependencies. So I'm going to choose npm install. This will take a few seconds to complete the installation process and it will show you with two commands at the end. The first one is to go into the project directory and the second one is to run the view project which will start the server and run the view app on it. Rather than using it from the command line, I'm going to open up the project on the Visual Studio Code Editor by dragging the project folder and drop it off into the Visual Studio Code icon in the dock. The good thing about Visual Studio, it has an inbuilt terminal. So go to terminal, new window. As you can see, it's already inside the project. Run the app using the npm run dev command. This will start the server and give you the local host URL. Copy that and switch back to the browser. Paste it on the browser. Excellent. Now we have our first view app up and running. Let's explore the folder structure. If you look at the folder structure, you can see the node models folder that contains the installed NPM packages. Then SRC folder. 
This contains the source files for our project. I'll be doing most of the work inside this folder. The assets folder contains the project assets such as images or any other file that will be imported into the components. Then the components folder. This contains the view components that are not main views or pages. When we repeat a set of code in multiple places in our project, that code would be a separate component created in this folder. Then the router. This is where you're going to create a route and attach that route to your view-based component. We will learn more about the file structure and how to organize them later in this chapter. 